What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bold Podcast. It is a beautiful day out there today. Hope the real estate market is picking up for you. Hey, on today's episode, we're going to cover something that I've seen a lot of people reach out to me about, and I want to have a pretty real conversation with you, and it has to do with lead follow-up. Um, I think that I've seen a lot of people recently asking the question, do you use the MLS or do you use your IDX website when it comes to setting leads up on drips for houses? I've seen a lot of people say lately that they're not using their IDX website. And I think that is one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, and what and I get it. Some people will say, well, Brett, my IDX site doesn't update every every few minutes. It, you know, it sends out one daily email and our market moves super hot. Um, I've been in one of the hottest moving markets in the United States. And I will tell you right now, it does not matter. Um, it, is, it is literally all the same. So hear me out. So what will happen is most people are looking for a way for their IDX website to essentially put their lead follow up on automatic. And I don't like that. Autopilot to me is meant for airplanes and Teslas. Um, autopilot is not meant for your lead follow-up. Here's what I mean by that. Yes, you can put them on a property drip. And yes, that's exactly what they want. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an idea here. And you will understand how you can utilize an automatic function to make it pro to make yourself proactive. Okay. And so what I mean by this, hang with me. Um, let's say that you have a, a lead that is hot and ready to go. Now, hot to me means pre-approved and ready to go in the next 30 days. They're actively looking for a property. They are pre-approved. They are ready to rock and roll. They just have not found the property they want yet. So that's a hot lead. So you have someone hot, ready to go. Okay. They are getting daily property updates from you in their property search. Now you have a very fast moving market and you need them to act quickly uh, when something pops up. So here's how you do it. I want you to log into your IDX website and I want you to make an account for yourself. So you are technically a lead at that point. Now, depending on your IDX provider, most of them do it this way, so you should be perfectly fine. I want you to create a new search for yourself but I want you to title it the name of your lead. So remember, Mary Smith. We're going to title the search Mary Smith. And what will happen with that is daily, you're going to get an email from your IDX provider, whoever it is, Boomtown, Real Geeks, whatever you're using. And what's going to happen is that is going to say, Mary Smith, here are the new homes on the market, here are the homes under contract, and here are the ones that are just sold. So... Why is that important? Well, because what you're going to do with that is you're going to pick up the phone and you're going to text or call Mary. And you're going to say, hey, Mary, did you see 123 Main Street that just came on the market? It looks like it's a pretty good fit for you. I sent it over to your email this morning. And she's going to say, oh, like she thought you actually sent her that property. Like you looked at the property, you reviewed it, and then sent it to her. In reality, your IDX site did it. But the trick is to make your clients feel like they are the only client that you are working with. Give them the best attention. Give them the most, uh, most effort you can. Automation is great. But if you call ahead of time, most people don't even look in their email. I mean, I've got more emails than I can count right now. I'm at, we're midway through the day and I'm at like 1,300. There's so many emails that come in. Most people, I mean, I'd probably say two thirds of those are probably junk. And so most people will probably do what I do, which is select one, hit shift, go down to the neck, the, the bottom one that looks like junk and click it again, then hit delete. And I will never even open those. So most people are like that. So what I would tell you to do is be proactive. So in the morning, when you get that daily sheet, I call that the daily hot sheet, you should be able to go through there and go, ooh, this one looks like it's a good fit for them. This one's a good fit for them. This one's a good fit for them. Give yourself a reason to be reaching out to people. I like to reach out to hot leads one time a week. If they're within 
30 days of buying a house, you should be calling them at least once a week. You should be texting them at least once a week. Show that you're engaged. That's my, that's my advice to you. So why do I not like using my MLS or why didn't I like using my MLS uh, to email my leads? Main reason, branding. It all comes back to keeping your brand consistent. It also comes back to you only have to check one place. If you are, if you have them on your IDX site and it's quite literally looking through, oh, here's all the homes they saw. Here's when they were active on the site. You can track all that. Most MLSs cannot track that or not as well. So my advice to you, use what you've got. You're paying for it. You might as well use what you've got. And you know what? If your brokerage provides it for you, even better because it's free. But my point is, Make sure that you're being proactive with it. And you should really, I mean, most agents, if they're getting, let's just say 10 to 15 leads a week, uh, which is a lot of leads for most single agents, if you're getting that many leads a week, you should be able to do this because uh, you won't have that many hot leads. You should really only have about 10 to 15 hot leads at any given time. When you think about it, it takes about three months to convert most leads so by the time you are converting, you've got a pretty good ebb and flow going. So you should have 10 to 15 hot, which means you should be able to follow up with 10 to 15 leads. Not a big deal. I'm going to give you one more tip on this. Seller leads. A lot of people get seller leads. Um, if you're getting those or if you know of someone that is thinking about selling their house, but they're giving you the ultimatum of, I'm going to wait until summer, start Sending them properties that are sold. Start putting, put them up on a search. Put them up on a search and then literally reach out to them. Hey, Tom, it looks like 123 Main Street just hit the market. That is one of your competitors. Let's watch and see how long it takes to sell it. You can use all of that data. So put them, and most people say, put them on a market report. Don't put them on a market report. Put them on a save search. Put them on a save search for their community. So you're keeping them informed on what's happening. You can reach out to them once a week. Hey, have you seen over the last week here, we've had three homes hit the market. All three are pretty good contenders you know, to what you've got. They're, they're good comps. So I wanna watch over the next week what's happening here, then the following week. Okay, those three leads are now, those three searches, I'm sorry, those three houses are now under contract. Boom, they're pending. You can track that all the way through, but it's giving you a reason to call them. It's also giving you a reason to make yourself look like the area expert. So my advice to you, put everybody on a save search on your IDX website, buyer and seller. Saved search, buyer and seller. Then take that same client and make yourself a save search on your profile. That way you are getting all of the information as it comes up. Make yourself proactive and make it look like you are on the ball at all times. And I promise that will make you get a lot more value add to your clients. You'll give a lot more value with it. That's my tip of the day. Uh, that was a short podcast. Thanks for hanging in there. Talk to you soon.